Hello everyone. Uh, for those that are too lazy to read and those that aren't able to read, I'm going to be reading Life, Liberty, and the Priesthood of Happiness Part 2, East Coast to West Coast. Employment, education, and housing are universal issues. Veterans fall into a category just like everyone else. Where we differ is that we have many beliefs and organizations dedicated to providing assistance on every possible issue imaginable. The complications that come into place lies within the cracks between the rules and the regulations. Those rules are simple to fix and easy to resolve. The, obstacle, excuse me, the obstacles we face is the confusion caused by the discontinuity of those in power and those simply who don't want to get their hands dirty. My story has been told and it is relatively a short period time of agony. I needed help and was able to preserve through it. Unfortunately, this caused me to become unfamiliar of a huge issue regarding the veteran population. Here is a synopsis of my story and other veterans across the nation. Gonzalo Duran, Bronx, New York. I was discharged from the Marines in November of 2011. I was going through many issues such as divorce, legal, and other complications. With these dilemmas going on, I decided to focus on school and build my future from there. Unfortunately, entrance into school would not start until January. The worst part is that I wouldn't see any monetary funds or benefits until February. My four-month struggle is why Devil Dog USA Inc. exists and until things change, I will continue to watch. Igor Zubarova. That's a joke. Uh, Igor Zubarov, Bronx, New York, uh, was attending a university and when summer came, his problems began. Igor was not approved for summer housing on campus. Not being a local and keep being kicked out of school grounds, he left as advised and began his ordeal of homelessness. Not quite homeless because he had the BAH allowance and coming, coming in and not qualifying for chronic homeless because he lacked one year of supervised homelessness. Igor jumped into the shelter system, which he was picked out as a veteran and then began a six month of supervised homelessness. When I found out about the situation, I basically knocked on a few doors, told them he was a student from Fordham University, had the money and was a veteran. The deal was sealed within a, f a day. After that, I helped him move in uh, his bags full of clothes into his new apartment. It took about a weekend. Reginald Johnson, White Plains, New York. Getting out of the military, Reggie decided to move back home so he could attend Fordham University. Shortly after his family relocated to a different state, the struggle to find an apartment using the GI Bill was so difficult he had to resort to alternative means. Forced against the wall, he had a family member lease his apartment for him while he paid the rent. And normally I don't go mm, like that, but uh, for quotation marks, that's why I'm using it. David Smith, Charleston, West Virginia. While on terminal leave, he did his best to secure an apartment. But as the deadline came closer and he was unable to do so, he moved in with his family as a backup. Towards the last days left on his 45 days plus of terminal leave, he finally found a place to accept his BAH just before it ended. He fears that if he didn't find that last broker, he could have ended up homeless. Adrian Elise, Bronx, New York, as a Fordham University student, he was excited about attending school and found someone to move in with because the BEH issue had it too difficult for him to find his own place. Unfortunately, the VA experienced a delay in 2012, causing him to ask his roommate for leeway regarding the rent because he, he went months without being paid his BAH. As tensions grew, eventually Adrian left his shared apartment and moved back home. This was his only solution because no one would take his BAH money. Jeffrey Lance Jenkins, or I, as I call him, Commander Woodchuck, Boston, Massachusetts, and Suffolk County, New York has been in the Army, Navy, and lastly, Army Reserve. Jenkins had a problem with his family, which caused him to move out. 
definitely apply for the the uh, GI Bill. Its application had been pending for several months. Unfortunately, a friend who worked in a local housing program moved his application forward into a veteran friend to me, a veteran affairs approved housing facility. Jeffrey will qualify for the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing, HUD BASH, basically. It's our Section 8 or, um, you know, housing program within the next uh, few months. Carlos Bedoya, Bronx, New York, after getting out, Carlos couldn't find a place to take his BH in New York and stayed with family. When he got his BA, he moved to another state, you know, and fortunately his partner job provides housing. Basically, he didn't have to struggle because he thought his partner was able to, to, uh, to manage. Louis Mercado, Bronx, New York, was excited after the military and loved the idea of going back to school full time at Fordham University. Unfortunately, no one would take his BAH because it wasn't a credible source of income. He couldn't find employment to adequate support him, so he decided to move back home and continue with his education. Derek L. Ranews, Tennessee, or Knoxville, Tennessee, excuse me, didn't have any problems finding housing. He was able to find realtors who were very patriotic in Tennessee. On a six-month lease, he paid three months in advance plus security, a total of three thousand up front to move in. Basically, he paid four months out of the six-month lease. That's why he was able to get housing. Samuel Hernandez, New York, Connecticut, and San Diego. Had issues with seeking housing in Connecticut and California. When in San Diego, he had to fake documents by providing fake employees and supervisors. This was the result of repeated denials of application for not having a work history while seeking higher education using the GI Bill. When in Connecticut, he had the same problem. But fortunately, after a few denials, he just happened to meet a family member of a fellow veteran we both served with who was a landlord. They helped him with the housing process with no questions asked. Guillomani Bravo Lopez, Bronx, New York, and Manhattan, New York, used the GI Bill to get his realtor's license and was fortunate to have family to avoid the problem of being denied housing. Since becoming a realtor for the past two years, he had regretted to be able to help only one veteran. The guidelines established by, the, by his job caused him to deny fellow veterans housing opportunities. So this is not, per se, his issue or his company that he works for. It's more towards the, the overall system. The landlords have the last say, um, and the way everything is pitched up the hierarchy, it just, it's just complicated. They, most of them wouldn't have to want to deal with something like that. Uh, the guidelines established by his job has caused him to deny fellow veterans housing opportunities. He needs work stubs, tax returns, and work history. One veteran he helped was outside his normal area of locations, and the landlord was more receptive in listening. Leomani is dedicated to helping veterans, and in this very active and is very active with with the, uh, giving veterans those requirements to allow the process to be easier. He also believes that Congress needs to intervene and ratify this issue immediately. Julio Smith, Bronx, New York, a New York City realtor, tells me that he needs requirements, requirements to rent to veterans. Unfortunately, the veterans who only have the GI Bill must be verified with the landlords first. From his experience, he hasn't had any luck and is now more inclined to not work with veterans. Julio feels that Congress needs to pass laws to make the process easier and feels discouraged about the situation. Now I can attest to that, that um, scenario. Edson Arzu, Bronx, New York, shares a similar story as myself. He had a hard transition upon his discharge from service and getting approval on housing with the GI Bill. When he overcame the situation, he, been, he began crusading for veterans and started his own nonprofit. Ensign is the CEO of that nonprofit and is a, and the, in his third year of medical school. He is currently using a different VA program to attend school. FYI, on a side note, it's my hero. Now you have a wide range of scenarios and examples to understand the dilemma. And now that you're aware of it, I want to clearly tell every individual 
politician, organization, agency in the nation until four out of the five veterans I can speak to can give me a positive experience. I will not back down in my mission. I will spend every penny and all the time I can to give to fix this problem. No matter what your opinion is, as a citizen, your duty as an American is to help those that provided the blanket of freedom assistance. Politicians, you work for me, the citizens in this article, and the rest of the nation. Whether you're an organization or an agency, we will follow your rules and regulations, but if you intentionally try to veer me or any other veterans within, with your idiotic red tape, I will hammer you away at you with all my utmost ability. To the members of this great nation I love, either you hate me or you love me, but I declare that either you open the door for me or move aside or prepare to get the, the door kicked down. I am here today because those that are oppressed need me. A voice for the veteran community is needed. We have a president letting senior leaders evade punishment for their failures in the VA system and letting his wife take the forefront when she's not even an elected official. When our direct chain of command, such as the Commandant of the Marine Corps and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, blindly give us away to the wolves and then turn their backs on us. When organizations like the Mission Continues deny helping veterans within the Bronx, but they receive a large portion of their funding to operate by those within the New York area. When the VA denies me programs like the Work Study, which is a great program, that it's, in my opinion, a great resolution, to me, a great solution to the VA's disability claim and health care failures. Deny those most needing slots to fill in the Bronx. When universities like Fordham University and its president, Father Joseph F. McShane, SJ, ignores requests for meetings to address this issue of veterans who are either homeless or in shelters while attending their schools. When politicians would rather ignore the issue because they aren't within their zones or are scared to pick a solution because they want to wait for the whistleblowers to do the work and piggyback on the media train. I'll go as far as to mention the useless ones of the great state of New York who are more corrupt than the drug dealers that have to face through the Bronx every day. Until the day the ones that give out opinions on what we should know and leave out what will be done, I will be here. The worst part in dealing with this ordeal is having to face my fellow veterans who are too cowardly to stand opposed and would rather kiss the very ass of those who are oppressing us. If my crusade bars me from the local student veteran club or negates me from potential employment within my desired field, I'll tell you this, I don't give a shit. I am not in this to gain, po gain political seat, monetary gains, or attention. And for those that mention above try to call me a hypocrite, I respond with this. There needs to be a face, a voice, and a figurehead on, the for on this forefront. If you don't want to take charge, then I will gladly take the mantle. I don't care if you are against me or you don't like me, but you will give me what I ask for, especially if it's within the rules and regulations and it's justifiable. In the words of Daniel Smith, Augusta, Georgia, who has been a side voice in my crusade, we all got to rally. Look after each other, even the fuck cards. I end with this. You showed us how much you love your country. Now let us show you how much your country loves you. Gonzalo Duran, Chief Executive Officer, Devil Dog USA Incorporated. Uh, the reason for this article is you can 